how to hire a media buyer for your agency. Welcome to another video. Today, we are gonna be covering how to hire a media buyer for your agency. By the end of this video, you'll know the exact four ways that I use to find a media buyer and the four things you need to know, you should know about this person before you bring them into your agency. So hiring a media buyer is a very important step in scaling your agency whenever you have paid traffic clients. By the way, if you have less than 10 clients, you should definitely not worry about hiring someone. You should just use a white label company, do the ads yourself, or use a contractor on a client to client basis. Now, if you have 10 clients or more, you should start thinking about bringing fulfillment in-house. That means hiring someone full-time. My recommendation is hiring someone from India, Pakistan, South America, especially Argentina, Peru, and even the Philippines. Why do I say this? Because an American media buyer is costly, is gonna eat up into your profits, and most likely you're not gonna be able to afford it. Instead, people from these countries that I just mentioned can afford to charge those rates because the cost of living is lower in those countries. So I personally sourced more than 100 candidates for virtual assistants, media buyers, appointment setters, and more at FIVA. And I found out that those countries are the best for the media buyer position. Now, where do you find these people? There are mainly four ways to find them. The first one is referral. This is basically reaching out to an agency owner, a coach, a mentor, a friend, someone who knows a media buyer, then get introduced to that media buyer, and if it's a good fit, work with them. This is gonna be the easiest and quickest way to find a media buyer for your agency. The other way is to use a job platform like Upwork or Fiverr, where you can hire people from Upwork who charge way less than what they charge here. And you can do this in two ways. You can find freelancers um, for whatever you're looking for, whether it's SEO, Facebook ads, Google ads, and then check their work, check their reviews, check their number of hours worked, or you can also do a job post exactly for what you're looking for. For example, you can put, hey, I'm looking to hire a Google ads buyer for the e-commerce space. Uh, needs to have managed at least $10,000 in ad spend. And then you're gonna get job applications. And then from that, you can select who is the best fit. Now, here's the tricky part. In these job platforms, you're required to communicate through the platform. So if you wanna circumvent this and pay someone directly, which is the best thing to do, you need to get creative and either make them fill out a form where you get their contact information or make them reach out to you by email in your description, something like that. But if you get, uh, if you manage to get a hold of a freelancer through this platform, this is one of the best ways to find someone. But it takes a lot of work to filter who's a good candidate and who's not a good candidate. Another way is Facebook groups. So there are many Facebook groups that are designed to hire and recruit people. For example, there's a group called Ad Buyers Job Board, where you can literally post exactly what you're looking for, and the same day you're gonna get 20 plus people commenting on your post, saying, hey, DM me, I'm interested, I'm interested, or messaging you directly. So let's say you post in these groups what you're looking for, at the end of the day, you're gonna get 100 messages and or comments, at least, and in some groups you can get more. So there you can find someone. And then later on in this video, I'm gonna teach you exactly how to filter the good, the bad, and the ugly. So watch till the end to learn exactly how I do it. So I'm gonna save you a lot of time. The last way is LinkedIn. So in LinkedIn, you can basically act as a recruiter. You can see uh, what you're looking for, what your job position is, and whatever country or location you wanna hire. Then you do a quick search and you're gonna get at least a thousand people if you're not too specific for what you're looking for. Let's just say, for example, Facebook ads, digital marketing specialist, Google ads, media buyer, e-commerce, media buyer, and you're gonna have a bunch of people appearing in the search. You can then contact them and message them, uh, message them with your offer, uh, what you pay, exactly how this is gonna work. By the way, in all these methods, I recommend this. You should do this first. You should ask a few qualifying questions 
through message, through whatever messaging platform you're using, whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook groups, Upwork, etc. Ask a few qualifying questions to see who's a good fit and who's not. Filter out whoever is not a good fit and just select the best five to eight candidates and just take those in a Zoom call where you can actually build rapport, you can see if there is going to be a culture fit, if there is a personality, um, etc. In fact, I don't recommend interviewing more than five people because of something called paradox of choice. So the more options you have for something, the less decisions you're going to make or the slower decisions you're going to make. So here's what you need to know about a media buyer before you jump on an interview with them. So the first thing is the experience. The experience is measured in two things, the number of years and the amount of ad spend managed. So ideally, you want someone who has at least two years of experience. One year of experience might be enough, but typically might be too early to judge if someone is really good, unless that person has provided extraordinary results. And that brings us to the second point, the amount of ad spend managed. So we try to hire people who have managed at least $10,000 per month for at least five months, okay? That's the sweet spot. You can hire someone who has managed $10,000 per month just once, but that not might be a good indicator. Now, ideally, if you can have someone who has managed uh, $100,000 in total in their career, uh, that's better. That's better. At least $100,000 in their career. That means uh, people have trusted them with their accounts, which proves that they have a mixture of theory and expertise and actual real world experience. Second thing is the niche. So, as an agency owner, you should have a niche. For example, HVAC, roofers, plumbers, etc. So there are many media buyers who are generalists, who can work with many niches. However, you need a media buyer who at least understands and has worked in your niche. So whenever templates don't work for that specific niche, your media buyer has enough knowledge to see and say, ah, okay, we should be doing this instead and provide creative solutions. Now, this over here is probably the most important part of this video. So if you're not paying attention, you should start paying attention here. You're going to need a case study of this media buyer. The case study is needed before you jump on an interview with anyone. So probably if you could choose just one thing out of these four is the case study. So you should ask for a screen share. The case study should be a screen share where the media buyer shows their screen with the ads manager and they can prove that they have managed uh, a campaign, at least one campaign in the vertical that you're looking for, in the niche that you're looking for. And there you're going to see the ads that they created with the copy, creative, etc., the audiences and the results, the metrics, CPM, cost per lead, amount spent, etc. If a media buyer doesn't have this, then don't hire them. Okay, the case study is the litmus test that separates the bullshitters and just the theorists from the actual real-world practitioners of their field. Finally, you should know their expectations. What they are expecting in terms of salary, what's the minimum they can charge you per month, the amount of hours worked, what's going to be the schedule. Of course, you get to dictate this. However, it's good to negotiate. Sometimes, something's going to give. For example, let's say you find someone who is really good, has experience, great case studies, great ads and management, however they can work in your schedule. In that case, it might be good to be flexible and sacrifice that for the other things. Now, we talk about expectations to avoid future miscommunications whenever you guys start working. Ideally, you want to pay them a flat rate with the option of performance-based bonuses. For example, at FAVA, in our agency, we pay the people that we hire on average between $1,000 and $2,500 per month. Why can we pay this? Because the freelancers uh, live in countries that are not the United States, like Latin America, Philippines, India, and Pakistan. So they can afford to live uh, comfortably charging this rate, charging this amount of money. So you can ask all these questions manually, or 
you want to be more efficient, what you can do is you create a jot form, create a type form in bold.me or a Google high level form or even a Google form. However, even though that's more efficient and that can be more streamlined and then you can zap the answers to a Slack channel or to Google Sheets, that also has the possibility of having forms not being answered. So I personally prefer to ask these questions via Messenger, via conversation or whatever channel we're using to keep the flow of the conversation there and then I can record the answers in a sheet or in another document. Then you see all the answers and you get to decide who you want to interview and who you decide not to interview. So once you know these things, the Zoom interview is pretty much just to build rapport uh, so they can confirm everything that they have told you. They can show you their case study live, ideally. Uh, and you can also see if there's going to be a personality fit for your agency, for a sculpture fit, if you guys are going to get along well or maybe not. So you should choose based on a mixture of things. Of course, experience, expertise, amount of ad spend management, but also a culture fit. You don't want someone who is too arrogant, too cocky, who is too much of an expert, so they see you as below them. Okay, that's the last, the last type of person that you want working for you. So that is how you hire a VP buyer, ladies and gentlemen. I know this sounds like a lot of work, it's definitely a lot of work, it might sound overwhelming. So if you want this done for you and skip all this legwork, you can apply to work with us. At Fable, we specialize in getting virtual assistants, graphic designers, mini buyers, appointment setters and more. So there is a link in the description below where you can apply to work with us, fill out the form, book a call to speak with your team and we'll reach out to you. Again, if you like this video, let me know in the comments below what your biggest takeaway was. And of course, subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content like this. Again, see you next time. Thanks for watching.